Hey guys, Dr. Eric, the fitness physician, talking about all things related to hormonal optimization, hormonal fitness, muscle medicine, cellular health, and much, much more. So I like to answer some questions from our readers and post people who post on social my social media or just uh, reach out to me or I see in the clinic. Uh, of course, one of the common questions I get all the time is how do I get more energy? I'm always tired. So of course, that's a huge answer, but I'm just going to give a, a quick overview and a quick a couple quick tips today. So I kind of cover the bases. We'll get into the weeds on some future videos as well. But everyone knows I talk about the double S, right? The sleep and stress, of course, common sense, right? But these are ones that are often forgotten. Everyone wants a sexy new cool toy and item and supplement and a magical formula, but we have to focus on the basic, the basics first. So sleep and stress, of course, are crucial. If you're not sleeping, even if I had the magic pill, I always tell people it's not going to work. You got to get sleeping. And I've got a lot of tips on that. Of course, I've talked about this in blog and videos before, but uh, optimizing your sleep is of course going to help with hormones, going to help with uh, fat loss, is going to help with energy. It's going to help with basically helping giving your body what it needs uh, to recover and to build and to do what it needs to do the next day. Stress is also very paramount then and ties into adrenal health and the fact that we want everything functioning on an optimal level at stress. If you're chronically overstressed, too much cortisol, too much adrenaline, epinephrine, then the system is not going to be firing appropriately. We're going to be overstressed. Again, there'll be too much, uh, that we're going to be out of balance. And I talked about this before, when the, when the system gets overstressed, uh, basically everything starts to, to backfire. You're burning too much sugar, then the, the body is stressed. The other hormones get thrown out of whack. You're going to have cravings. You're going to be irritable. Um, your rhythms, circadian rhythms are going to be thrown out of, out of whack, and you're not going to be using glucose properly. The cell is going to be uh, functioning improperly and stress and excess of cortisol, et cetera, does a million different things to the body in terms of cellular health, which I've talked about in other videos. And I'm not going to get too deep into the weeds, but the bottom line is we want to support adrenal health and manage stress. Of course, relaxation techniques, meditation, deep breathing, um, you know, nighttime routines to, to, to dim the lights, get red lights, uh, I have blue blockers, uh, drink some uh, chamomile tea or some sleepy time tea, get your nighttime ritual, do some relaxation, uh, make, make sure you're taking time for yourself throughout the week, you know, doing some relaxation, daily walking, sauna use, um, et, cetera, et cetera. We can also use adrenal adaptogens to support adrenal gland health and, and much, much more. So sleep and stress are huge. So that's a whole topic in and of itself. Diet, of course, got to have the right diet, right? You want to avoid the processed foods, excess sugars, uh, processed foods, trans fats, industrial seed oils, focus on the healthy fats, you know, your nuts and your seeds, your avocados, your extra virgin olive oil, plenty of protein, plenty of carbohydrates, of complex carbohydrates, all the right kind of food, right? If we're eating junk, then if we're putting junk in, equal junk, junk out. So that goes without saying. Uh, vitamins, oftentimes there's just some basic vitamin deficiencies, right? Vitamin, the B complex, all the B vitamins, and of course, vitamin D and vitamin C are crucial, especially for energy. That's why we use, all, especially uh, if we're getting a certain types of diets or people doing elimination diets or they're just on keto or just on this, I talk about diet rotation and you may just be missing a simple vitamin complex and B complex is very uh, common, especially people that have genetic variations or MTHFRs or all these different variations where they're not absorbing the vitamin B or they're not getting the right kind. Remember you're eating a uh, uh, all vegan diet, you're not getting enough complex B vitamins. So even if you are eating meat, meat again, if you're not absorbing it properly, that could be an issue. So we may need to supplement with the B complex or even do uh, vitamin B injections to get the B vitamins in. Very crucial for energy production, cellular or health, and much more. Vitamin D, of course, has thousands of functions in the body. They've done studies where people were supplemented and given, again, optimal levels of vitamin D, and over 77% of these people had increased energy and overall quality of life, as well as other functions, too. So vitamin D is very important as well. Other vitamins, a lot of times people are deficient in vitamin A and vitamin C and zinc. So it's sometimes it's good to go through a good history with your physician or your health provider and go through these things or maybe even do a micronutrient analysis or uh, some other advanced testing to look for micronutrient deficiencies and then supplement what's needed. Um, water, that's a common one, but sometimes it's frequently forgotten. A lot of us are just underhydrated, right? We're just not drinking enough water throughout the day. Or do my amino drink that I've talked about in the past to get optimal hydration. Check out my other videos. It kind of has a list of what I have in it to optimize hydration. Sometimes just water isn't enough. You need some certain amino, amino acids to facilitate cellular uh, hydration, and that's gonna promote energy. Because again, if you're dehydrated, the cell's not functioning properly, the cell shrinks, and then the, everything inside, the, the sensing, the crosstalk, the communication just isn't working. So adequate hydration is very, very important. Talk a little bit about adrenal health, the liver health also ties into this. Of course, the, the biggest things are, of course, avoiding all the things I talked about, the refined carbohydrates, you know, excessive high fructose corn syrup, toxins, try to cut back if you're taking tons of acetaminophen or Motrin or any other medications that could be affecting your liver health. Obviously, to alcohol is a toxin, try to avoid a lot of that. You know, I like my bourbon, but <laughs> try to keep things, uh, you know, try not to go overboard, right? Take care of your liver. You can do some other things to facilitate liver health too. You know, I, I, you know, I'm a big fan of using bitters and bitter foods to kind of facilitate bile production and, and excretion 
and kind of has an indirect effect on liver health as well. And there's of course a lot of liver supplements and liver support um, uh, agents that can be taken as well, uh, which we could look into and I'll give you some ideas later on. But um, a lot of liver health, people talk about liver health with you know, dandelion and um, other supplements you'll find in like liver support or liver detox teas and things like this. They could be helpful. Not absolutely, the biggest thing is just avoiding the, the, the offending agents because your liver has a great regenerative capacity. And if you do all these other things, it's gonna take care of itself, but these things are not gonna hurt. Um, of course, hormones are massively important too. I see a lot of people who have fatigue because of hormone deficiencies, you know, testosterone deficiency, estrogen deficiency, progesterone deficiency, thyroid deficiency, all these things are playing. This is a huge topic in and of itself, but obviously the big ones are the major players, right? The ones we talked about, the insulin and the cortisol, uh, which we talked about with adrenal health, testosterone and estrogen with my men and women as, we get, as they get older and they're having deficiencies, fatigue and loss of energy is huge. And once this is corrected, this, these, my patients feel tremendously better, improved quality of life very quickly once we correct this. Thyroid, of course, is very common. And a lot of times I see a lot of people who come to me who say, oh, my lab's normal, but they're not optimal, right? And we talked about this before, but thyroid health is massively important. So correcting your hormones can be a huge player with energy as well as other things too. Sometimes we do some other things to, to boost energy too with peptides or, or vitamins and things of this nature. Toxins are big. You know, I've talked about toxins before, you know, we're exposed to thousands of toxins in the air and the food and the water and the plastics, our, our products we put on our, on our skin and our teeth and our hair. We're exposed to this everywhere. We have to get these toxins out of our system. We, we had talked about previous uh, videos too about the cell membrane. If it's bogged down with these toxins, the receptors are not uh, uh, working properly and hormones and all these other neurotransmitters are not getting in. So we got to basically get that cell membrane healthy, allowing the good stuff to get in, the bad stuff to get out. So by removing these toxins, uh, this can be massively beneficial. You know, I talked about saunas and avoiding offending agents, but sometimes we just need a good cellular, uh, cellular protocol to remove these toxins. And I'm doing a lot of that with my cellular detoxification protocols. To, it's a multi-month process to kind of get these out and get the cell functioning properly. Uh, so reach out to me if you're interested, but this definitely works. Of course, supplements are, I've talked to, I've touched on B vitamins, the, the vitamin D, some of the missing nutrients that we just don't think of. Of course, there's a ton of, of, of vitamins and supplements you'll see online that are quote unquote energy supplements. A lot of them are junk, but some do work. Uh, but again, the biggest ones are the adrenal support, the B vitamins, the D vitamins. D vitamins. Um, I'll put a link later on uh, for uh, some support agents that uh, have some unique properties for supporting ATP production and energy health, like energy, ENRG, AZV, and I have a couple B and D complexes that I like too. But if anybody's interested, just, just message me and I'll give you the links with a discount code uh, for some of the supplement companies that I use. Some of these are really unique and pretty cool when they work. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video, how to boost your energy. Uh, of course, I didn't even talk about exercise, but you know, that's a huge one too. If you gotta be moving, gotta be, gotta be moving and grooving and exercising, that's gonna boost your energy. And sometimes you're like, oh, I just don't have the energy to exercise. Just do it, just get out and do something. Even if it's just for five minutes, you'll be amazed at how good you feel. So exercise, put these things into action. Let me know what you think. Give me some feedback. Let me know what else you wanna talk about. Reach out to me for consultations, either myself, and uh, I'm also doing dual consultation with my partner, Ali Gilbert, great one-two punch. We cover it all, nutrition, fitness, exercise, sleep, stress, hormones, peptides, and much, much more. So I want everyone to have a rockin' weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.